Hey, this is Tasha. Welcome back to my channel where I talk about whatever I want because I'm multifaceted. I don't know what happened to me last year, but in 2021, I read zero books, okay? This is coming from a girl who reads books. I read a lot of books in 2020, 2019. I have no idea what happened to me last year, but this year on my goals list, I resolved to read as many books as I could. As many books as I could this year translated to 11. Okay, but that's okay, because 11 is better than zero. And so today I wanna just review the different books I read. It's a interesting amalgamation of topics and, and different stories, and I don't really have a genre that I love aside from you know fiction novels, but I do read a lot of different things. I'm gonna go ahead and do a review on the books I read this year, and you can let me know if you've read the book and your thoughts, if they match up, or you can let me know if I pushed you on the edge of buying it or no buy, okay? Let's get into it. So the first book I read this year was Jodi Picoult's The Book of Two Ways. Okay. <laughs> I started reading this book in 2021 and I could not finish. It took me forever to finish this book. This book is such a hard read, especially in the beginning. Around the end it picks up and finally we get into something, but in the beginning it took me forever to get interested in the storyline. And this is not normal for me and Jodi's books. Jodi Picoult is one of my favorite authors of all time. I love all her books, they're all so different. The plots and the storylines, they evoke so much emotion. The Book of Two Ways was stressful <laughs> for me to read. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened to her in this book, but this one wasn't it for me. It just took me so long to get into it and even follow the Egyptian storyline. It was a whole thing. Um, not my favorite this year, definitely. Um, but you'll see soon that we have a little redemption from her, but Book of Two Ways wasn't it for me. The second book I read this year is called The Bogleheads Guide to Investing, the second edition. And it's by Mel Lindar, Taylor Larimore, and Michael LaBeouf. I actually got this assignment to read this book as a part of a book club in the 365 Days to Fire program that has been put on by Our Rich Journey. If you know them from YouTube, they're a couple who used to live in the United States. They retired early and moved to Portugal and they have a program called 365 Days to Fire so that you can reach your fire goals as well. This book was a part of it. Um, I think it was in the second month, I think it was February. February or March, we got assigned this book to read. It's very, very um, simple. It's a simple read, but it gives you a lot of information and insight and understanding into investing, which otherwise would probably be a little bit more difficult to understand if you're just trying to Google some things. John C. Vogel is the founder of the Vanguard Group and the Bogleheads are people that basically follow his investment strategy um, who are like, in it, in it, in it. They're called the Bogleheads. There's like a forum and all that extra stuff. But this book was very, very uh, simple to understand, which I loved. It helps you figure out kind of how to invest, how to not be an emotional investor. It helps you to figure out if you come into a large sum of money, what to do with that. It helps you to figure out how to plan for the future. It's a very, very simple book, but a lot of information in here to get you moving on the right path with investing and get you investing ASAP because the quicker you invest in the market, the better, you know, your turnout will be. So this was a good read for me. It helped me a lot and helped me get my foot into the investing game, like practically. So the next book I read is called Daughter by Tawana Darche Burks. This book is a novel, a fiction novel. When I tell you this book is a page turner. I love this book from start to finish. I know that I'm not biased because if a book is trash, a book is trash and I'm gonna let y'all know. <laughs> but my friend actually wrote this book and I actually got some insight to it even before it was published because I got to read some of the early pages. And even then I was like reading, reading, reading and I didn't want to stop. Like my favorite novels are ones that can be real life. And that's what this book feels like to me. Like this could actually be somebody's story down the street and I'm like invested into what's going on with them. It's a very interesting story. It's loosely parallel to my friend's life, she says. The book is about a girl living in New York City. She starts having these different panic attacks and stuff and then she tries to find a therapist. Her friend recommends like a Christian therapist to her. Um, and she's like, I'm not about that God stuff. Comes into all these different situations with past loves. Um, on the back end, she has family that she's estranged from that's going through things. And it's a, it's a 
great story of like kind of like redemption and then it, it's left open so that there may be a book too like this is a very very interesting read i read it very quickly because i was so engulfed in the storyline pick this up if you're interested in fiction novels but real like that could be real life the fourth book i read was jody picolt's wish you were here okay redemption for jody because this book fire from start to finish the first line of the book is a date i think it's like march 14th 2020 and y'all know that was the beginning of lockdowns for covid like when i read that first line i was like dang she wrote this book kind of fast like that just happened um and then when i tell you from start to finish the book is a wild roller coaster of emotions <laughs> She definitely had me in my feelings. I was mad, I was sad, confused, shocked. Like, it's about a woman who's like an art dealer. She lives in New York. She lives with her boyfriend who is a nurse in New York. And, you know, she's supposed to go on this trip with her and her boyfriend and they don't get to go because COVID hits and he's a nurse, right? He has to go. She goes on this trip, it's a wild ride. I can't even tell you more than that because I don't want to give it away. This book is incredible. I want to say it's the, my favorite book that I read all year. This book, top tier. Wish you were here. Back, Jody's back on top with this one <laughs> because Book of Two Ways. <laughs> but Wish You Were Here, that's the one. Okay, next book I read this year, which a lot of people have been reading. This book is called Atomic Habits by James Clear. Atomic Habits, I want to say it was a good book. It wasn't one of those books where it's like, okay, I get it, and you don't really leave with anything. It was a lot of practical ideas in there, practical um, steps that you can take to start building better habits and getting rid of bad habits, which I really liked. Showing you how to habit build, and it was a very, very good book. Talks about tiny changes, and I've been able to implement that in my life this year and I have seen remarkable differences. So I think the book is worth reading. If you enjoy self-help books, this is one that will actually probably really help you. <laughs> it's not just blowing smoke up your behind. Like it does a good job um, if you do need that extra push to make some small changes in your life that you will help you see big returns by the end of the year. Okay. The next book I read was The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. The Vanishing Half is about two twins. They got separated and they're living two completely different lives and they meet up again, okay? <laughs> That's as much as I want to say without me spoiling it because I'll go too far. The Vanishing Half, I want to say, it started a little slow in my opinion, but then it picked up. And I was like, okay, I see where we're going. And it picked up and it picked up, right? Until the end, when they sped to the end. <laughs> the end, I feel like the book uh, was rushed at the end. Um, I did like where it was going. And then at the end, it was just kind of like, oh, this is, uh, listen, the book is due. I gotta finish writing it here. It's done now. Um, I kind of felt like it was rushed and not really given the care that it could have been given at the end. But overall, I mean, it is a good book. I liked it. I liked the, like I said, I love um, novels that could be real life. And I believe that that could definitely be a real life story. Read it, check it out for yourself. Let me know down below if you've read it and give me your thoughts on The Vanishing Half because I posted that I read it on Instagram and I had a lot of good discussions in my stories. So let me know what you think about it. The next two books I read, I read them back to back very quickly, are from Don Manuel Ruiz. I read The Four Agreements and I also read The Mastery of Love. The Four Agreements is noted as a practical guide to personal freedom and The Mastery of Love is a practical guide to relationships. I really, really enjoyed reading both the books. Um, the Four Agreements really has kind of helped me change my mindset and do a lot of inner work, um, especially when it comes to the agreement about not taking anything personal. That particular agreement has changed my life. Once you can align yourself with not taking anything personal, it really changes your perspective on how you relate to people and how other people relate to you, okay? <laughs> it frees you from judgments. It frees you from a lot of stuff that you don't have to deal with, a lot of emotional turmoil when you can stop taking things personal. I think that everybody should read it. It's a great book. It's not that long. 
you read it to read the rest of the agreements. I don't want to give it all away, but that book was wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Then, because I read that one and I loved it, I read The Mastery of Love right after. That book is all about self-love and how to actually <laughs> love yourself and not just in a in a way like, oh, I love myself and you know, I treat myself to things and stuff like that. Like, no, 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 no. Figuring out how to stop judging yourself in a way that opens up judgment from other people to you. The book is, I feel like it was life changing for me. It has helped me really figure out why I judge myself the way that I do. It has offered a lot of freedom in that regard. So I think that you should read it. I think that everybody should read both those books. Don Manuel Ruiz is very um, wise. And uh, yeah, I love them both. I call that man Manuel. It's Don Miguel Ruiz. My bad, Donnie, my bad. I also read Act Like You Got Some Sense by Jamie Foxx. It's an autobiography from him. It's a book about things that his daughters have taught him. I will say I was a little confused when I first started reading the book because I love celebrity autobiographies. Like I love getting the tea, I love getting the behind the scenes, the tell-alls, I love that, especially when it's somebody that I'm interested in. And for me, Jamie Foxx is one of the most underrated artists, period. <laughs> Actor, singer, everything, he's, underrated tremendously and so i wanted to read his book to see like his life and his thoughts like i was very very excited i didn't notice the other tagline that said something about fatherhood and other lessons his daughters taught him i didn't realize the book was about fatherhood <laughs> i wanted to know about his life in the tea so that threw me off when i first started reading it i was like oh okay um, I still read the whole thing um, and it was a good book. I love the lessons that he learned from his kid. The voice that he wrote in is legitimately his speaking voice. Like he is talking like he's sitting right in front of you, which was funny at some times and other times I was like, okay, we need, we need a publisher. <laughs> Where's the editor? <laughs> But I loved um, the different lessons he learned. I love um, learning about his grandmother. Um, if you're a fan of Jamie Foxx, you know that he loved, loved, loved his grandmother. He has a whole album and songs dedicated to it, so dedicated to her. So I like that part. Um, but like I said, it just wasn't what I was expecting. It is a good book, especially if you like Jamie Foxx, or especially, shoot, even if you're a father or begun to become a father, I feel like a lot of the things he's learned um, translates to a lot of people and that they can glean some wisdom from it. I will never be a father, <laughs> but I will say I did learn some parenthood lessons that I can take into the future. It just wasn't what I was expecting. I was expecting an entirely different book, got something else, wasn't wasn't terribly disappointed. It just wasn't what I was expecting. But get that book if you love Jamie Foxx. He's, I just love Jamie Foxx. I'm glad I read it, but I want him to write I want him to write a different autobiography just about his life. Cause he was saying a couple things in the book, like different parties he could throw and different celebrities that he would meet up with and all this stuff. I'm like, wow, I want to learn more about that stuff, you know? So hopefully he writes something else um, in that way, but we'll see. Okay, we're coming down to the wire, last two. The next book I read was called The Push by Ashley Audre. <laughs> It's a fiction novel, and this book was so triggering <laughs> to me. I'm trying to I'm trying to gather my thoughts about it. It is a very um, addictive read. Like I can't put it down. It's like a train wreck. You can't put the book down. <laughs> um, I, it started out a little slow. The book is a lot about motherhood. The tension and turmoil that can happen between a mother and their child when their child does not come out the way they want it. And I don't mean like physical deformities, I mean like like uh, personality issues. I don't really know how far to explain it. The book was extremely triggering to me. I don't need, I, I'm not even a mother, okay? <laughs> I'm not a mother and now I was just reading the book like, whoo, do I wanna have kids? Like, 
it's one of those but it's not a bad book it's a it's actually a really good book when you when it comes down to the when it comes down to judging a book on its entertainment value and the way that it brings you in into the storyline into the world of what's going on it's a very very good book i can see how this book might trigger a lot of women though and so it's like i think people should read it because it's an interesting book but then also i'm like man maybe you shouldn't read it because you're gonna have you looking at your child crazy and i don't know it and this is another way you know that it's a good book because it's very polarizing, right? I have all these polarizing feelings about it in myself and I'm not even in that situation. Um, I think that makes it a great book. Great discussions. If you have read the book, please drop down in my comments and let me know. And listen, I will get on Instagram and we can talk about it. We can talk about it in the story so that we don't have to spoil for people in the comments below, but this book was stressful for me. And it ended on a beautiful cliffhanger. Ashley Audrain did an amazing job writing this book. It's something. <laughs> it is something. Pick it up. Or maybe don't. If you have a, if you have a very sensitive spirit, Especially when it comes to children and you're, you're like, I don't know if I want to, maybe you shouldn't, maybe you should. You be the judge. <laughs> and let me know down below if you're gonna pick it up. The last book I read is called The Other Black Girl by Zakia, I wanna say Delilah Harris. Okay, so it's a fiction novel. It's written by a beautiful black woman. Um, <laughs> The book started out a little slow i'm like okay where are we going with this it took me a while to get into it I, ha I had to keep putting it down it took me a while to get into it but then it started getting interesting it's a book about a woman who uh, works for a publishing company um, she's the only black girl that works in her office and you know if you're black at all you probably you know understand what that feels like being the only black there um and then they hire another black girl um, and then it becomes a whole thing. The book got very interesting um, and I was very excited because then it was like, it was given page turner. It goes back to the past and it, it goes between, it goes between the past and the future um, from previous authors that worked at the company. It's, it's very interesting. And then at the very end, the very, very end, they lost me. <laughs> the very end I mean the book is good but like I said I love fiction novels that can be real life and this was given real life all the way to the end it the ending like the plot twist threw me off and I was like dang it this could have been this could have really like I read the whole thing I mean even to the end, I feel like the end was a little rushed. I have some questions or like loose ends, you know, for me. And maybe I just don't understand. I might just have to talk to somebody about it and figure out, okay, did I understand that properly? After everything that went down in the book, I felt like the plot twist was a little childish. I don't know if that's the right word to call it, but it just felt a little, just a little silly. I don't know. I have mixed feelings about it. Like I said, I did get into it in the middle, the middle all the way to the end. Um, it was given page turner. And then um, I do feel like people would definitely enjoy it, but just for me and my taste, I, I'm a pretty harsh judge, I think. <laughs> I'm not impressed by much, I will say that. But the end just really, I was like, dang. Okay, it wasn't bad, like I said. I think that uh, people should read it. It is a good book. Um, I was just a little disappointed at the end. And then I feel like the very, very, very end was was pretty rushed. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the books I read this year. As you can see, I like a lot of range of different books between self-help, fiction, I like autobiographies, you know, all of that stuff. But I kind of lean towards fiction books because I love being taken into somebody else's world. My world, life, and adulting, I see it all the time. I want to be taken into another dimension. <laughs> so I love fiction books. 
If you made it to this point, go ahead and subscribe if you want to, like this video. Make sure you comment below on which book is your favorite if you read any of these or what are your thoughts on any of them. If you want to see more content from me, you can check out this playlist here and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!